Well, as I promised you in my first scooter video, I was going to be uh, trying to do little rides around town uh, with the motor scooter, the Honda PCX150, and kind of uh, just uh, showing you what it's like with urban scootering. Uh, I wouldn't say a lifestyle of urban scootering. I don't necessarily ride it everywhere all the time, but right now I'm getting 128 miles per gallon if the fuel injection little uh, odometer thingy is reading correctly. We'll find out when I fuel up. I haven't really gassed it up at all since I first got it, so I'm running just about a half a tank still, so or maybe one one bar below half a tank. So it might look it looks like it's pretty close to 200 mile range easy with this little thing. So well, so uh, enjoy my little scooter ride. Well, since I last showed you guys uh, the scooter, I've gotten a, a windscreen. Uh, I got the dealer to throw in the windscreen as part of the purchase. It came in about a week or, st or so later, and so I went ahead and put it in myself. Uh, of course, dealers are going to charge you a lot of money when you when you want to ins and have them install it. But uh, basically, to do the installation, you have to pull off two screws under here, and then this thing pops off with some clips and that reveals the holes for the mounting brackets and it uses these brackets here that you have to install onto the windscreen and then bolt them into place. There's a lot of hardware and I didn't know what all the extra hardware was for because the kit of course didn't come with instructions so I had to go on the internet and what I found out is that with these scooters when you steer the machine the wheel turns obviously, but the front body fairing doesn't turn. And so the concern is that if the mirrors are in the same location as they originally are, which is here, that the mirrors might hit the windscreen. So they have part of the kit is to relocate the position of the mirrors. And so you unscrew the old mirror adapter, you put a plug in here, and then the mirror, the uh, windscreen kit comes with this bracket here and extra long bolts and it bolts to the clamp that holds your brake uh, reservoir and of course on this side as well you can see so that's the little addition it moves the mirror back about roughly two inches or so but it's not a problem and uh, so one of the things I was thinking about is maybe I could figure out how to use this plug for mounting a video camera and so I took the cap off and because the hole is an M10 fine thread metric and I want to adapt it to a quarter 20 uh, two trips to the hardware store and some handmade fittings here and so this screws down into there and I had to solder together these three pieces of brass to get me a tube that I could put a quarter 20 bolt in. So this screws into place on the old position, little old location of the mirrors. And then you have your uh, quarter 20 bolt that you can mount a camera to. Now I tried it with this camera, the iPod Touch, and the iPod does not have image stabilization because it's not really an action camera. So it ends up being very, very vibrating and very uh, not really usable when you're riding the scooter because the image is just shaking and everything. But uh, So it was an experiment. I still have the adapter I made. If I want to get an action camera at a later date, I can put it on there and maybe make it a usable video mount. Well, so I have a little bit of scootering to do. I have to pick up a couple pounds of coffee beans uh, and uh, I have to go get breakfast. I've already done my little yard work project, um, putting up a decorative fence. I got that work done today. So it's off to breakfast and uh, the uh, coffee shop on the little Honda scooter. Well, I'm down here at uh, UNM. I'm gonna have breakfast at the Frontier restaurant. But I wanted to show you guys something I thought was kind of cool. And that is, I'm getting about 129 miles per gallon. How cool is that?
So this is the Cornell and Central. That's the University of New Mexico main entrance. Uh, and a lot of road construction going on because of this Albuquerque Rapid Transit project. Uh, anyway, this is the back of the Frontier Restaurant, and they have kind of a little painted brickwork that kind of looks like a little European kind of whatever village thingy. But anyway, we'll go, go around to the front, go inside. Well, they're well known for their orange juice and their homemade tortillas and the great food they have. And people watching, of course. People watching is great here at the Frontier Restaurant. So the Frontier used to announce everybody's number on the loudspeaker and it got really annoying. So now they have a little number system, just a little red LED display. And it's a lot quieter. So mine's number 77, huevos rancheros with green chili stew. And this is their tortilla machine. Homemade tortillas, done the old fashioned way. And they are good, man. They're some of the best tortillas around. Brian Erlocker was a uh, UNM Lobo football player. And of course, everybody knows about him now in the NFL. But He's well celebrated in these local parts. Mm. And the best part of having huevos with green chili stew overlooking the architecture building, architecture department building UNM, is John Wayne is ever present in this place. Over there and over there. Again. So if you're not familiar with this kind of food, this is a corn tortillas um, with over easy, in my case, over easy eggs and green chili stew, which is New Mexico green chili, potatoes and really good stuff in it. It's fire roasted um, green chili, so you always have a little bit of the skin that's been roasted dark, like you would see. And then of course pinto beans, cheese, and all the goodness there, and the homemade tortilla. And their famous fresh squeezed orange juice. Before the Albuquerque Red Rapid Transit project uh, got underway, this uh, setting right outside uh, the window here was a major bus stop. And street people and bus people would come through the door right there and would go and use the restrooms at the frontier. So this little part of the frontier was always busy with people coming and going, street people, bus riders. It was a great place to do street photography in that sense. Um, of course, it's all changed now with the Albuquerque Rapid Transit Project. So, but this, this restaurant is a series of rooms that goes one to the other to the other to the other, all connected together, taking up one entire building, one entire block, actually. Well, I guess I'm cleaning my plate pretty good, so... It must have been good. Mm -hmm. And the Frontier is such a big operation that they've not they've taken over not only the main building they're in, but they have this, these other buildings that have more of their uh, kitchen and cleaning and food prep activities. So they have a real huge operation here, and they, they own most of the parking on this whole block. Parking is always an issue here at, uh, around the University of New Mexico. These uh, handbills and on sign posts and light poles are really indigenous to this whole area. But it's interesting about that. This is a new pole, man. This is brand new wood. You don't see a new light pole that often. But uh, part of the construction going on here for the Albuquerque Red Rapid Transit project. So you're not supposed to be loitering anywhere around here. But what's interesting is they have infrared heaters on the awning of the roof overhanging the sidewalk so that people who aren't, are loitering but shouldn't be can be comfortable in the winter time. So this building here used to be the Tamarind Institute, a lithography uh, studio that they moved up the street, but this was one of their old buildings that used to be at. I don't really know if anything's going on in this building at all, but 
This is the kind of street art you see a lot around here. It's pretty cool, actually. Uh, I don't know, it's a kind of an ordinance sign, but it's now a modern work of art. Parking enforcement is real important along this part of town, and the parking enforcement people are always writing people tickets. And we are back to the scooter, and we're going to take off now and go get some coffee beans. This was the reason why I didn't have coffee at the Frontier. I had orange juice instead, is because I want to go to my Michael Thomas coffee and <clears throat> get some good beans and a good cup of coffee. Okay, we'll see you there. Well, I'm at Michael Thomas Coffee Roasters. This is their Knob Hill location. If they don't have the beans I like, I go to their main location further, a little bit further down the neighborhood. We'll see. This is a lever-operated espresso machine. The genuine thing, huh? The lever-operated thing. Very cool. Thanks. So somebody has a nicely decorated little patio chair, and they're doing some kind of photographic portraits. So I thought that was pretty cool. So we like the Hornet Roast from Michael Thomas Coffee. It's a dark, oily bean. Works well with the way we like to brew coffee, so. I'm gonna enjoy my cup of coffee out here, along with this little doggie. So I guess we know where the photographic portrait lighting was being used for. How cool is that? Well, walking back to the old scooter with a couple bags of coffee beans. Got plenty of room in here for video junk, coffee beans. That's not actually Crown Royal. That's a bag with a spare charger and a cell phone and stuff. But And then when I have stuff in here, I hang the helmet off this little bracket with this little cable system that they provide. So that's kind of cool, huh? Okay, well, I think I'm going to go home and work on some photography. Well, uh, I'm on the scooter now. I'm going to head home across town and work on a work on some photography projects maybe today. Well, that was fun. So my barber shop is maybe a quarter of a mile up the street. It's close enough to walk, but I like to ride uh, the scooter or a bicycle or a motorcycle of some kind up there without the helmet. So when I ride back, it'll blow all the hair off. Anyways, so hey, what do you think? All right, that was a fun day with the old scooter doing some errands, and uh, here we are back home. So the thing I like about scootering around town is it's easy to get places. It's easy to park it. It's easy to maneuver it. It fits just about anywhere. You can put it up on a sidewalk if you had to. But uh, scootering is a lot of fun. And the, with the storage underneath the seat, and if you, like today, I brought camera gear, a little tripod thingy microphone, and I didn't have room to store both the, the helmet and all this underneath the seat. So the scooter has a little attachment and a little cable so you can hang the helmet off the side of the scooter but it's still locked inside the underneath the seat so that gives room to put other stuff underneath the seat like bags of groceries or camera junk or whatever so uh, that's what I did today I carried around uh, uh, my little video gear and did my errands and it's a lot of fun actually uh, this 150 cc four-stroke fuel injected engine that Honda makes is really pretty good and it it accelerates my 210 pounds uh, adequately. It's pretty much like a car in terms of acceleration. You know, one of the things I've I've noted about motorcycles in general, full-size motorcycles, is especially the sport bikes, they're generally overpowered. In other words, there's more horsepower there than you actually need just to commute. Uh, and of course, people like to buy motorcycles because of all the extra power. But for just uh, what is adequate for normal transportation, a, a small motored and small size engine like this is pretty adequate and it gets really good mileage. Well, this is Joe Van Cleve, and this has been another of my scooter diaries. But until next time, you have yourselves a great day.